Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, and this is my Agile Thought of the Day. Today I want to talk about refactoring versus rewriting. And there's actually a lot of different stuff out there from different Agilists about the false promises and problems associated with doing a Greenfield project. And I was at a client the other day, and it just all of a sudden crystallized in my mind exactly what the situation is and why it's so dangerous. And I just sort of want to share that with you guys. And so, First, let's talk about what the scenario is. Usually, you have this legacy system, and the legacy system has been there for a while. That's sort of why you have it. And because it's been there for a while, you don't want to deal with it, right? You want to rewrite it. Your company obviously depends on it, but it's always been a thorn in your side. It's always hard to write. And then usually there's this extra motivating factor some sort of event. Now, sometimes it's just artificial, but usually there's something that's gonna make the legacy system all that more costly to do. Now, it could be something simple like, you know, at the end of the year, this contract expires and we don't wanna renew it. Or it could be, you know, like you're moving offices and you don't wanna host that server, you wanna move it into the cloud. Or, but something that's gonna make it so that continuing the legacy is harder. This is the extra incentive that allows you to go and do a rewrite. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna rewrite this code and you're gonna try to make it so that when this event occurs, your rewrite is sufficient to replace the legacy. And the problem with this all occurs at this one singular date, right? So ideally this is gonna happen a little bit before, right? So you have just a little bit of coverage and we can all have some breathing room but in practice, it's always gonna hit here. And then of course, if it goes later, you're gonna have a very high expense because the thing, the legacy, now you are scrambling to keep it alive when you didn't want to. So all of this is really contingent on the same problem. And the problem is this, you have hundreds of thousands of lines of code, both in the legacy and in the rewrite. And the question you need to ask yourself is, is this equivalent to the old system? And just to make the problem a little bit more complicated, of course, with the new system, you always wanna add those new features that you've been at, wanting to add forever. So you really have to ask now, is this new system with new features equivalent to the old system with different old features? And this, is an insanely hard thing to understand. You have hundreds of thousands of lines of code. There's not gonna be a single person who understands what all of it does anyways. And even the combined logic is just really hard to know, is this actually equivalent? And because that's so hard to know, when that date comes, you're asking almost an impossible question. And usually you're starting to ask it for the first time because up until that time, you're just asking if the features that you implemented are what you want, which is not the same as whether or not it's complete to the old system. So what Agilist and, and myself usually encourage is not to do a rewrite, but to do a refactor. And the thing is, when you do a refactor, as you start writing code, new code in a new language, but integrating with the old system, you can start deleting code from the old system. So instead of this situation, you have this situation. And this is a much different situation because A, now you're asking the question, is this remaining few lines of legacy code something I can delete, right? And that's a much easier, it's much easier to say, hey, this you know, 500 or 1,000 lines of legacy code can be deleted that's much, much simpler than asking, hey, does this 100,000 lines equal this other 100,000 lines? But the other thing is you have this velocity that takes place. Now, it's not always going to be, well, it's not ever going to be a straight line, but you are going to have this decrease that occurs in your legacy code. And that means as you're going through, when the 200,000 lines goes down to 100,000 lines, you can start to say, hey, we're kind of halfway. Now it's, it's not that simple because the first, when you get into legacy code, you're gonna start cutting away lots because it's just clutter and dead code. So you're gonna see a drop right in the beginning and then there's gonna be a sort of leveling out and then another drop. But 
as you're going through it, you have a much cleaner idea of how much is remaining. And how much is remaining is a much easier question to ask than do these two systems hit. So first, realize that if you do a rewrite, you need to answer this question. Is the rewrite equivalent to the legacy? And at the very least, put effort in to making that question answerable, hopefully early on, because if you wait until the last minute to hit it, this is the problem with almost all rewrites. And a reason that a good amount of rewrites never actually end up in production, that you'd rather stay with the crappy system that you know works than the much better system that you're not entirely sure if your business is gonna fail if you put it into place. But better yet, just start refactoring. Work with the legacy code, work with the new code, and start switching them out so that at the very end, you can just turn off a very little bit of code. Thanks for listening.